just English kids. They can't play. They don't know nothing about football. You know, if it's preach, not, brother. Preach. That's why I respect you so much, Jeff. That was the reason why. You know, so much. You gave, you gave those, us a chance. All those guys, like Tony Allen, and all the guys that had this vision, mm -hmm. that time we were doing it, bro, like they were laughing at us in New York. They were laughing at us. Hey, those kids can't play football. Are you kidding me? And then when you got to – see, because this is what the game does, bro. The game don't care. Without a doubt. Big Jeff, I appreciate that, I man. Appreciate I that. appreciate that. For sure. I mean, that's why, you know, like when I was playing – you gave me this, the utmost respect, you know. Like I remember you standing on the sideline one day and said, <laughs> "Hey, don't, 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 don't slip on number twenty-one. Don't think because he's a he's a national, he can't play." And your right. boys, they they underestimated me. Yep. <laughs> you know, I remember, like I said, <laughs> you guys broke my heart a couple times too. You know, I mean, and everybody always says, "Yeah, bag, it was really hard in my day." But you know, the fact of the matter is, I, I'm not. I ain't telling stories. I'm ton of facts right mm. and these kids need to know like you guys are you're you're the history you're the heritage you're the in hawaii we say you're the kapuna and a kapuna is a is a an elder that is wise and you guys hey they the game ain't no hey fellas the game ain't no different <laughs> i mean they change the rules a little bit but it, you still got to be tough you still got to sacrifice you still got to be a team guy you still got to buy into something bigger than you. That's what makes football mm. such a great game. And, you, you know, you guys are, are forever entwined. Effie Abada owes a, owes a wealth of gratitude to guys like you, right? Mm. And I truly mean it. And Effie's a great kid, but mm. he needs to know what, who opened the door. Great to see you, Jeff. There's no good doubt it is, man. It's been a long time. This is like a, going back in a class reunion or something, man. <laughs> it really is, Jesus. You ain't lying, man. You ain't lying. We're, you know, we're really, uh, we're really pleased to, to have you on, man. And we really want to have some, to have a conversation with you, man, about American football and your life. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeff. So, Jeff, man, listen. Hey, Paul is in the middle. You know, we got uh, Stephen Hutchinson, a.k.a. Hutchie Hutch. And you know, the man himself, we're all blood the hidden machine. I'm sure you remember us well. It's been a while, <laughs> yes, my do, brother. My brothers, I do remember you very well. You broke my heart a couple times, both of you. Hey, I'll be <laughs> I want to bring it up in the podcast, man. So listen, I, I, that's one of my questions to you, man. That's one of my questions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just, I just want to wind back, man, because it's like, well, how do I introduce this guy, man? Oh, no. Your narrative is as long as hell. I mean, it's your career spans, your coaching career spans over 40 years. You know, from my understanding, it started in 1981. Today, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I was three years old when I started. Whoa, what, coaching? Hey, don't, don't, don't try to, don't, don't try to fade me with that age stuff. Don't try to fade me with that age stuff. Hey, listen, hey, this is not the Wikipedia. Massive right? coaching at three years old. Three years old. You know what I'm saying? I was talking about, coach, from my understanding, I'm coaching from, you know, in the, like, NCAA teams, the CFL, uh, NFL Europe, GFL, you know, the German Football League, the Bundesliga, yeah, we, we first hooked up in 2000 at Hamburg, but I'm going to come back to that one too. You know, uh, a top football analyst, regardless if it's Canadian football or American football, you know, <clears throat> preparing for years on Sky with our very own 
Neil Reynolds, you know, Jeff, you've been a GM, you know, a director of player development. You know, Jeff, I'm glad to have you, man. Kudos to you. Thank you for being on board. Hey, I, hey brothers, I appreciate the snaps, but what I think all that might mean is I'm not any good at anything. That's why I keep, they keep shuffling me around to see if there's anything I can do. <laughs> nah, bro. No, I, I looked at all of that and I thought to myself, you know what? They ain't paying the man. They're not paying the man. That's what it is. That's what I want to nah, I, I disagree. I disagree with that, bro. But I disagree with that, man. You, you, you're obviously good at what you do. That's why you're oh. in there so long. There's no way you'd have been in, stuck it out this long if you weren't any good. So, no. Nah. So, kudos. I'm enough respect. Uh, I appreciate that. But you know what, guys? What's amazing to me is now, you know, we're living in a world that's so different than the world that you cats grew up in. Mm -hmm. You came to football for the first time. And, you know, like fields with no lines on them, and <laughs> no equipment, you know. And, bro, and the thing about it is, and this is the thing that, that is it, like I always say this everywhere I go. It's you guys, you guys, right? The Tom Tobos, guys like you, that that first walked the path for these young cats that are, have all these opportunities now, right? Because yeah. when you guys were playing, th those opportunities weren't there mm -hmm. because of you guys we were able to create a pathway that's grown into what we see today, where you see Correct. David Ajabo playing in the NFL and, you know, yeah. you see, you know, see all those guys like, like that would, that, that was so like when you started, when you first put a helmet on, like that was so far, that was like going to Mars, bro. I mean, you that ain't, but mm, you, know, I know. you guys broke down the barriers, right? All the prejudice, all the, hey, they're just English kids. They can't play. They don't know nothing about football. You know, if it's preach, not brother. Preach. That's why I respect you so much, Jeff. That was the reason why. You know, so much. You, gave, you gave us those, a chance. All those guys, like Tony Allen, all the guys that had this vision, mm -hmm. that at the time we were doing it, bro, like they were laughing at us and you know it. They were laughing at us. Hey, those kids can't play football. Are you kidding me? And then when you got the – see, because this is what the game does, bro. The game don't care about color. The game don't care about where you're born. The game don't care about how old you are. The game don't care about what your sexual orientation is. The game just wants to know, can you play? Can you play? Can you, yeah. can you respect the game with the way you play? <laughs> and you guys did that every time you put the uniform on. Mm. Without a doubt. Big Jeff, I appreciate that, I man. Appreciate I that. Appreciate For sure. I mean, that's why, you know, like when I was playing, you gave me this, the utmost respect, you know, like I remember you standing on the sideline one day and said, <laughs> hey, don't, 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 don't slip on number 21. Don't think because he's a, he's a national, he can't play. And your right. boys, they, they underestimated me. <laughs> you know, I remember, like I said, <laughs> you guys broke my heart a couple times too. Hey, you, yeah, you're damn right. I will never, I will never. <laughs> When we were playing against Amsterdam, it was a close game. I think it was like mid third quarter. You know, <clears throat> they were kicking off to us. I was on the kick return team. I was on the front line on on, uh, on on the right on the right hand side, and they needed to get the ball back. <clears throat> and I know Jeff. I know Jeff. Jeff was a special teams coach, right? <laughs> and instead of them kicking it deep, he squibbed the ball straight to me. <laughs> Straight to me, thinking I'm just gonna fumble on this, you know. It's just like I don't know, the thirty thousand in the stadium. He's gonna get nervous. He's gonna fumble this, and that's oh, I took that so personally, Jeff. I took that so personally. I jumped on the ball, I picked it up, I ran it back about eight to ten yards before I got myself tackled. And I look, I, I looked to point you out. I looked to point you out that side. I said, "Yeah, Jeff." Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Hey man, you know, like there, there really needs to be a time and, you know, and all these NFL games not being played in Europe, there yeah. needs to be a time, whether it's in Frankfurt or you know, Madrid or London or wherever they're playing, there needs to be a time where we get everybody together that experienced that as a national player or a national coach 
the experience of idea. NFL Europe. And, you know, we, you know, I, 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 it'd be good to get, get us old heads with the, with these young cats and just say, hey, man, do you realize what these guys used to do? When we used to go to, we'd have those winter training camps over in Cologne yeah. and you'd have to you know, get out there with a snow yeah. shovel and shovel the field off so that we could practice, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, and everybody always says, yeah, bag, it was really hard in my day. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, I, I'm not, I ain't telling stories, I'm telling facts, right? Mm. And these kids need to know, like, you guys are, you're, you're the history, you're the heritage, you're the, in Hawaii, we say you're the kapuna, and a kapuna is a, is a, an elder that is wise. And you guys, hey, they, the game ain't no, hey, fellas, the game ain't no different. I mean, they change the rules a little bit, but it, you still got to be tough. You still got to sacrifice. You still got to be a team guy. You still got to buy into something bigger than you. That's what makes football mm. such a great game. And, you know, you guys are, are forever entwined. Effie Abada owes a, owes a wealth of gratitude to guys like you, right? Mm. And I truly mean it. And Effie's a great kid, but mm. he needs to know wh- who opened the door. Right. Yeah. yeah. Who opened the door? And I think that I think that's you know they don't know that. I mean, because they probably don't haven't been told. They just think the NFL came in here and decided to put on the academy, the player, you know, what's it player called again? Pathway. Your player, player pathway. pathway. Think it, it just happened oh. like that? No, you, you're Victor's me, Flick. You know, we could just there's a, there's a whole bunch of us that's created that created the way for us. Yeah, yeah, coops. You know what I mean? We all crap, but they wouldn't know that. They, they just think it just happened. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, bro. I don't know about I don't know about them because I, I don't you know I, I'm I'm I don't talk to them. But I know this, and you mentioned some names right there: Tobo, Flickinger, Scotty Cooper, Rob Hart, all those guys. Right? There is a bond that we share that will never be broken, never. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so it's so funny because I'm. I'm out in San Francisco to work out a free agent, right? And I bump into Flick, right? And he's out oh, there. Wow. He's out there with Thule. He's out there with Thule working. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So he goes, "Hey, man, uh, my my nephew's gonna come to a workout of yours. Take a look at it." And I said, "What's your What's your nephew's name?" He said, "Eric Harris." Well, lo, lo and behold, long story short, Eric Harris played nine years in the NFL. And that happened because of an association that was forged in the National Player Program in NFL World. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what's so cool about the whole deal. That's beautiful. You know, you know we've had, um, uh, you know, do you remember Brad Johnson um, from the London Monarchs in 95? You know, we've had him on here too. And, you know, <clears throat> he, he's like singing on the same hymn sheet, man. He's like, without NFL, you, his career would have never got to where it got to today. And that's mm. a player, from, you know, Florida State saying the same thing. That's what the league did for him. Do you know what I'm saying? But for us as, as European uh, players playing at that pro level, I mean, we have spoken about what you're speaking about uh, for, for years on the ground to players, coaches. And in the UK, you know, they, 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 some people, they do know that. But hearing it coming from yourself as a coach who... Yeah. <clears throat> You know, who had who took that experience with us? It's it's huge. It's absolutely huge, man. You know what, Stephen? This this the opportunity to be on this podcast is really pretty cool. And for me, I'm going to use it as the first step in what we just talked about of getting yeah. guys together, right? And yeah. I don't care if it's one night in a pub in London when I come over to do my sky thing, but just guys yeah. get together. You know, get Victor mm. back. Get get all the guys that that you know have us have that incredible bond, and just you know spend some time with fellowship with one another and be together, because I think I think it can grow. And I and I'm gonna encourage the NFL and the guys at the at uh, at, at the academy to have you guys there. Have mm. you guys there? Okay, right? yes, man. These kids are looking. These kids are looking for role models, right? And that's what we're trying to do, Jeff. That's a, that's the. A- you're yeah, saying that, that that's what I'm working so hard to do, you know. But you know, it, 
the whole point we put this together is for that simple reason. We're trying to we're trying to to um to, to create that. We're trying to 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 get out there so we can speak and, and give them the experience on what we went through and especially the path that we took. Tell them how hard it is. Tell them what they need to to get to that to get through that. And yeah. not only that, help them on the back the back end because when the when it's time to put them hang them shoes up, that's a struggle in itself as well. And they. I struggled for years, Jeff. I'd be very honest with you. You're right. You know, You're right. mentally, Everybody. I'd struggled. Everybody does, Ro. And, that, and that's nothing to be embarrassed about. And, and, and you're right. And that's what they need to understand mm. when they're 18, that it ain't yeah. going to last. Long, <clears throat> and that you are privileged every down you get to play. Exactly. And, you know, don't disrespect the game by wasting your abilities, you know? Yeah. Because... All the, like I said, like all the sacrifices I watched you guys make to chase your dream, when really there was no, right? there was no, you know, like, no. Come on, man. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it was just like you guys, you guys made people pay attention. Not mm -hmm. by the one, not by what you said, not by talking shit, not by, by the way you played the game. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the best way to make people pay attention to it. I hear you, definitely. You know, just off the back of what we're all saying, man, Ballers in the Middle is all about raising the awareness of American football in the UK, period. May it be men's, you know, adult football, maybe women's football, may it be wheelchair football, college football, maybe flag football. And, you know, we, we, we want to go out there and share our narratives um, with regards to those, those, how can I say, those, let's just say, for real, those 10 percenters, that can take the pathway that we did. We want to reach out to those people and, and work with them to do so. Um, and that's, that is a part of this whole platform, man. You know what I'm saying? But it's, um, like I said, man, it's just, it's just brilliant. I mean, what you're saying on this podcast today is gold. It's absolutely gold. Well, you know what? I, I think that, that we got to act on it, right? This can't be mm. the last conversation yeah. we've had. And I want to get I want to get you guys on my podcast, and I okay. want to link in, and I'll I'll find out how the technology works because I don't know anything about technology. I'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, I can help that's, you with that. That's why hey, you hire I can help with that side right? of things. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but but let's 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 get like five or six guys on on one of these. Let's really mm, yeah. chop it up. Let's let everybody tell their story, and let's let the young ones know we're going to talk about it, right? Yeah. And all the all the amazing things that that you guys right. experienced. <laughs> Because of this game, so I've got, oh, I've still got connections. I've still got connections with some of the other uh, um, European players that are based in France, Germany, um, may, yeah, maybe Spain. Oh, maybe Mexico too. In my Facebook, so I'm I'm more than happy to reach out to those guys and and come oh, that's back. That's a great idea, though. Definitely a great idea. I'm fine. Yeah. Because yeah. that'd be amazing. I, I think I think we need I think we need to do it. I think we need to do it, brothers. Mm. That sounds great, man. I mean, Jeff, I've got questions for you, man, but you just blow my questions out of the park. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I was like, where did you go for that? It's like, we, 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 we have a nice little plan here. And, and you know what I mean? He just came, he just came out punching. Hey, well, I, I got, bro, bro, you got to tell me, man, when did you cut your dreads? Oh, um, <laughs> January this year, the 3rd of January this year. It was, it was time, Jeff, Are it was time. Like, it was time. Never shall a razor, never shall a razor come upon my head. <laughs> hey, Jeff, man, they, hey, Jeff, that motherfucker was getting too heavy. That's what it was. They were, they were, it was. They were, they were too heavy. And I didn't realize until I took them uh, off. Tell you, hmm. you, bro, uh, tell me, just just tell me you're not like Samson. When you lost your hair, you lost all your super <laughs> no, no, no. The power's still there. The power's still there. Still <laughs> still working out, still working hard. It's, it's all still there. I'm still moving pretty good for for for, the, for, for my age. You I'm know, probably better shape than most people, to be fair. No, 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 tell me how it is. You guys both you 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 guys both tell look like good. how it is, bro, man. You guys both look like you when, still play. When the, you know, you know, when the curtains close and the music starts playing and the bright lights they switch off and you and you you walk away from this, you leave a huge void, an absolute huge void. And I've been blessed to be around the professional scene for four to five years, but I never played in the NFL. 
those guys, <clears throat> I'm thinking to myself, they go they from, like, from Power 5 schools to the NFL. they in the NFL for two or three years, and then they get cut. That fall back down, unless there's right. some form of support programs to help those guys, man, I don't that, know how they deal with that. because Yeah, that's, that's going to be hard for them. My, for my narrative, I struggled. I mentally struggled. I thought it took me a while to find something to fill maybe fifty percent of that gap. You know what? I think I think it really doesn't have any like when you pour so much into one thing, right? And I mean, whether you're financially rewarded at the elite level like the NFL guys or you're rewarded at the level that we were in NFL Europe. It doesn't matter because it's not the money. I mean, you miss some of the stuff about the money or what the money can buy you and that kind of stuff. But it's not the money that leaves the hole. Brotherhood, right? It's that family. It's, yeah, and, and and it's and it's caring about something so deeply that it would push you to get up in the morning at five thirty and go lift weights and run till you puke and then you know put your body at risk and because of the game right and then when the game's gone that's that's a gigantic hole uh, an ex-player of mine who i had three different places in, in in the pros is now the vice president of the seattle seahawks and his job is he's the director of player development and his job is to help guys from the day that they sign a, a contract with the seahawks start to think about transitioning out of the oh, NFL. That's great. Because you know what it was like when we, dude, we, when we were when we were young cats, you're bulletproof, you're nine feet tall, and you ain't never going to stop playing, yeah. right? Yeah. And, but it, it, go, it, it ends for every single one of us. And having a plan and, and being aware that, you know, that, that it, it isn't, we're not promised anything. Right, nothing, and so guys feel some. And, and tell me if this isn't if you didn't feel like this a little bit because I know I did. You feel almost a little bit betrayed by the game, <laughs> right? Like, like all of a sudden, like the game owes me something. What well, game don't owe us yeah. nothing, right? But, but the sooner you realize that, the sooner you can start putting your energy into something that's positive, like you guys are doing with this podcast. It, like it, it's, it's, I'm going off of, I'm going off a of hutch. It took me mm. a long time. It took me it I'd say it took me it's about eight years ago, Jeff. I until I found CrossFit. CrossFit was the closest thing for me as like a, a like a little family that I could get to. That to where I felt like I was part of something again. I think that's the the biggest part. What what was I was missing was I, I wanted to be a part of something. And when you're not prepared for that, it is hard work. Mm -hmm. I went from, I tried so many different sports and it, it wasn't happening. And so I found that that was the closest thing to a, a family, you could say, orientated thing like, you know, when we was playing. And, and now I've done that. I've, it's, it's easier for me to, 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 that I can step away from that kind of activity, activity, activity within sport. I don't, I, I don't really need that anymore, but I enjoy, I enjoy it. But where, when I first retired, no, I just wanted that family back. One of my boys, that's, that's what I cared about. You know, you know what, man? It's so, you're so fortunate that you found something positive to fill that hole because way too many of our brothers try to fill that hole with stuff that ain't going to take them nowhere. Yeah. It, it maybe they get a maybe they get a little bit of temporary relief mm. from the pain they feel, right? But in the end, you know, it, it's just dragging them further. Down. Yeah. And right, that's all the stuff that we got to talk about to these young yeah. kids and talk about to the ones that because we're all going to transition at some yeah. point, right? I'm looking at it right now. I'm staring it right in the face right now. I'm not going to coach forever, Christ. Nobody yeah. does, right? So what's it going to be like for me when it's like time to put the whistle right. on, right? We'll see, but at least I hope I'm trying to put a plan yeah. together for that. At least you realize, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't have the chance to say what you're saying. You know, you you, you realize, okay, I know I'm not going to do this forever. I know it's time. I'm, I got, I've got to create something. So when I am ready to, to hang the whistle up, 
I could do it comfortably. A lot of people don't think like that. They just think, yeah, like you said, we, we got forever. We could do this forever. Nah, we can't. You know, you know, Jeff's been around this life for a while, man, and, and he's obviously seen he's seen this mm. cycle we're talking about with, with hundreds of players, man. And so, so I'm pretty sure that you know, even though you've seen it and you're trying to put some form of plan to mitigate against the the, the big bang, that bang is still going to be there, man. I mean, it's like myself, for example, when I when I walked away from the game, Jeff, when I walked from the gate away from the game in 2003, it was through frustration. It was through frustration, Jeff. Not that the fact my, my body was beat up or anything like that. I was in great shape. We're well cont um, contest to that. I probably could have done about another three years, but it was frustration. And the frustration was this. You probably work it out, but the frustration was this. You know, I put in the time. I looked like an American player. I played like an American player, uh, but I didn't get the game time like an American player. And I want to tell you this, playing at Scotland was far better for me than playing at London. I tell you that the coaching at Scotland was for me the best coaching experience I've ever been around. However, the, pol the politics of the game kept me off the field because, you know, we had, we, we had some great running backs too. We did, but the politics kept me with the game. You know, those teams that allocated players to Scotland, you know, from the Patriots, uh, from Chicago, from Buffalo, they wanted to see their players play. And they put, there was that pressure. There was that pressure on the head coaches and the, and the OCs and DC for those players to play. See, so there was that pressure that I had to deal with, much less the competition of the guys that I was playing against. And even the competition of the guys that I was playing against, we had a great family, man, that the, the running back crew was, was tight. And, you know, sometimes they're trying to force me and say, oh, just roll on, just roll on. But I was never that type of guy. I was never that type of guy to try and steal reps. Uh, I was that type of guy to say, when my number's called, I'm ready. So when it came to like, you know, 2003, you know, I played, I practiced just as hard as the guys. I got the practice tape, man. I, 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 I show some, I show some of my, my peoples. Me with these guys that are allocated to NFL. And it's like, the question will be asked, well, why didn't you play? And, then I, and to try and explain what I'm explaining to you guys, you guys will get it straight away. But for them, the people that are outside the circuit, they hear, but they don't understand. They don't understand. Never really understand. So I walked away. I walked away from the pro game for straight. And I got called. You know, <laughs> you know, Stephen, I, I'm going to tell you something. Right? And I used to say this to the to the players, uh, and I and I say it to the Canadian kids now in the CFL, because it's very similar to what you guys experience in NFL Europe. And I said, you know, just tell me why. If you put on a pair of soccer boots, you're a world class you're a world class athlete. And if you put on a pair of football shoes, you're a second class citizen. It has nothing to do with where you're from. It comes down to it comes down to the opportunities that are afforded to you, right? And then what you do with those opportunities. And too often, far too often back then, and I think it's better now, right? Because and I'm gonna tell you why it's better now. Because the NFL sees money in it, right? It's not an altruistic uh the NFL's the good guy, we want international players. It's about their business. They want international players playing so they make more money internationally. That's cool. That's for them. It's of a course. business. They're businessmen. But that that desire, they finally figured it out, right? That when Effie Obata or Ojabu or any of these guys make a play, oh, we, that's something to sell. That's success. We can sell a success story. But, but when you guys were playing, Nah, man, hey, just go over to stand over there, right? <laughs> go stand over there and tell them. Remember, yep. you remember that? You remember the stick had? Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. The, yes. The, very, like very. Europe, yes. Uh, European. We had a European alliance on it, and they turn it around when when you guys had to play. Listen, man, Masafumi Kawaguchi, our yeah, Japanese yeah. linebacker in, in Amsterdam, dude, he was better than the American cats we had, right? But 
you like we were all like you said, Stephen, we were always getting pressure from and and, and, and it's economics. It's always at the root of everything. So if you're a team in the in the NFL that's given a million or two million or whatever they gave to keep it per club to keep NFL Europe going. And you got a guy that you might have drafted in the fifth round and you're trying to find out if he's a player or not a player. And then all of a sudden some Japanese kids playing in front of him. <laughs> you're going, hey, wait a minute. What am I spending my right, money on? Yeah. Right? That's the reality, yeah. right, of what you guys face. And that's the stuff that these young cats need to, like, you could have, like Marvin Allen goes to the Steelers and wins a Super Bowl ring, but he had no chance of getting on the field because he wasn't allowed on the field. Right. He was told to practice every day, be a good scout team player, right, and then go stand over there, right? And, you know, he had to get in a fist fight in Steelers training camp to earn his credibility. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because... You you know you guys know what it was yeah. like, right? Yeah. Hey guys, and, and, and so, just for the audience, you know, it's like who? Sorry, like, just for the audience that's going to be watching this, Marvin Allen is Tony Allen's son. That's who we're talking about here. Yeah. Tony Allen's son. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he got a Super Bowl ring. I ain't got a Super Bowl ring, <laughs> right? But but you know what? He told me the story about, and I can't remember what DB it was that, you know. He gonna test you. Like that's that's the way it is. And fellas gotta understand yeah. that. You know, like you can get tested. And and he, he got tested and he came up throwing hands, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, all the receiver room with the Steelers, they were all in on Marvin because Marvin didn't right. back down, right? And that's what again, same deal. That's what you guys yeah. have. All these kids, I'm, t I'm telling you, man, we gotta talk to these young cats at the cat. Because all these kids that are going over to play college football in America, and you're gonna walk up, you're, you're some brother from from London, and you're gonna get off the plane in Philadelphia, and you're gonna talk like you're an Englishman, right? You're gonna be, they're gonna look at you and they go, yeah, what? Who's this dude, right? With this funny accent, right? Like, and and then you better know they're gonna test. Of course. You. And you better. And I don't think. I don't yeah, think. You better like be. You said, I don't think they realize that. Hmm. You will get tested every day. And they, you get you get tested be, until you prove yourself. Pretty much. That's what it happens. Just, just listen to what Jeff is saying. Like, like it's it, it's just that same story. In Rowell, yeah. though, right? I could tell that guy that was lined up against Rowell a hundred times. Man, don't sleep on this <laughs> Jamaican kid <laughs> with the dreads. Right? Right? Don't sleep on. And if I remember correctly, now this is this is this. If I'm right on this, man, I, I'm, I know I ain't got Alzheimer's. You were number twenty-one, weren't you? Yeah. I told you. Now that's thirty years ago, and I you made such an impression on me. I can still remember your number <laughs> right. today. But I have to say this. I have to say this. This is why this guy was knighted the Hitting Machine. <laughs> People don't, people don't Bro, get it. <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't block him we couldn't block him i put two dudes on him we couldn't block him right and and you know they, they you know how players are they like i said now let me tell you something this guy's been in this league he knows how to play the game he's he's gifted athletically he's tough as shit if you think he's just going to go out there and, and lay down for you, you you better think again and then and then when you shook that one dude down and went smacked our returner, and, and the guy's coming back to the side, and I said, hey, did I tell you? <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but they had the experience to hit man first. Hey, Jeff, listen, man, I, I, this is beautiful, man. But, Ro, you know, just just to, I guess, uh, I want to give, like, some of my, an example of, of, of some of the challenges that I had. I'm going to give you one example, Jeff. <clears throat> 2001. I don't know if you noticed, but I played in London Monarchs 1995 to 1996 and 97 I didn't make the team and I didn't hook back on until 2001. So when I came back into NFL Europe, I had a monkey in my back. I really did. I had an attitude because I always felt that I could have played at that level, but I just couldn't hook back on just due to reasons beyond my, my control. And I remember, man, <clears throat> I remember practicing 
and, and in camp in Tampa and uh, a scout came up to me and a, a guy named Mark Nora. Now you might know Mark Nora because he played CFL for years, yeah? And he was allocated from um, Atlanta at the time. And so when we finished running our, <coughs> our gases, uh, um, a scout from Washington Redskins came up to me and, and him and, was, and, he, and he goes, oh, well, what's your name? And he started looking down the roster. I said, I said I'm Stephen Hutchinson. And then he looked up and he goes, oh, he goes, you're English. I said, yes, sir. I am English, yeah. No, oh, I didn't know they played in American football in, in London. Didn't know that at all. And then he asked me, well, how, old you? how old am I? And I said to him at the time, I was, I was 28. And he goes, you look 21. <laughs> As he said, I said, no, I said, I'm 28. And he goes, yeah, well, I've been watching you in practice. And he goes, you look, you look really great. You look good. He goes, I want to, I want to keep my eyes on you. I said, great, that, that was, and listen, I'm a red, I'm not more, at the time, they were called the Washington Redskins, now Commanders, and I was, I'm a Redskins fan, and I, it was an absolute dream come true, I, I levitated off that field, I was so happy, I levitated, <laughs> and when it came to the season, Jeff, didn't get no game tape, it was a lot of special teams, but not running the rock. And, you know, I would speak to the head coach and I'd say, uh, you know, have the Redskins got in contact with you, three bags, four. He said, initially they did. In the beginning of the season, they got in contact with, with Gene. But as the season as the season went on, and I wasn't getting a lot of game time until week nine or week 10, it just fizzled out. And that could have been an opportunity for me that, that went, that knocked, but I couldn't go through the door. Royal had the same thing, man, back in 95 with Detroit. Yep. Fellas, like, that's, that's, that's why these stories and your experiences are so critical for the young ones, right? And, you know, in this, like, we, I don't want to sound like an old dude, but it's just the facts, bro. We live in a different world now. Right, all this shit on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and all that, and everybody's pushing their brand. And what they need to do, in my opinion, is be grateful for the opportunity that they have and take advantage of it. Yeah. Because there's a lot of cats like you guys that put in the work that never yeah, had the opportunity. That's so true. And you, what the way you carried yourself, the way you played, the way you competed. You created the opportunities for these young guys, and that's the truth. That's just the truth. And, and going off the back of both of you, I just don't want them to waste it because, hmm. you know, we we had to, you know, we had to go in camp in the best shape of our life every single year. You know, we go into camp, and some of the Americans would not not even remotely in in shape like we were. And, you know, and that's the thing. That's the things we had to deal with every year, year. So we went, sure we went into camp in the best shape of our lives. So we had no setbacks on that part of it. Mm -hmm. Then once you learn the, the book, we're on the same page as them now. But if you go into camp thinking that you're on the same level as them and you don't look after yourself or you want to hang out like them, you got to understand you already got a, a marker against you anyway, because you're from a different country. So we weren't trying to, we was not trying to, we weren't trying to have that monkey on our back like that. So we went in there in shape. Give us the playbook. We'll learn the playbook. And we struggled with that at the beginning. I'm saying I struggled at the beginning because I, what I knew was call something else. But it was the same thing, but call something different. That's all it was. But no one told us that. So we had to <laughs> figure it out ourselves. You know, and then we, when we did figure it out, no one could tell me nothing. It's, but then, I, you know, when we first started this podcast, I look back on some game film, I'm like, Hutch, now looking back at this, yeah. the only difference that they were, they were American and I was English. That was it. They made mistakes just like I did. But the difference when they, when they made a mistake, they were lie back on the field. I made a mistake. I won't get back on the field. Right. Dog, I'm going to tell you something. When you see that's and that, there again, like there's a kid named Freddie Pelling right now over at the University of Hawaii. Right. Freddie's a great, big, long guy that came through the academy. And, you know, we'll see how 
how far he's going to go. He's a redshirt freshman, and he's got a big body, and he can bend a little bit. He's a little nasty, a little bit like Sebastian Vollmer was as a young kid. But what he's got to understand is exactly what you're talking about, Ro. Because when he blows an assignment or when he gets beat off the edge or when he gets forklifted back to the quarterback, he, he ain't treated like the kid from L.A. or the kid from Dallas or the yeah. kid, right? Oh, that freaking that freaking English kid. Why are we over there recruiting over yeah. that? Right? You guys, you guys felt that yeah. bias. You guys felt yeah. that prejudice. Really That's a really good point, Jeff. That's a really good point. Because just going on the back of what Rawal was saying, those pieces about us having doing that prerequisite work to get into camp, being 100% at the top of our fitness ability. What what thing, something that really affected me in my first year was confidence, okay, was confidence. And, you know, when you feel like you're doing something right, like everyone and the people are doing things right, and you're not getting any form of, uh, I guess, positive coaching, and you might be getting negative stuff, it knocks on your confidence. <clears throat> When it knocks on your confidence, you play with your shoulders up. Yeah, you play with your shoulders up, you're not comfortable, and you you tend to make mistakes. I have to say this. When I went to, that was a, that was a London in my first year. When I went to Scotland, those guys made my shoulders relax. They did. They made my shoulders relax, and they helped me. It, they really helped me out to just to be me. But once I was me, I could do what I did. And that, that was something I will definitely want to like, uh, Give kudos to hey, Jim Hutch, and, that, and his coaching that, staff. That's the that's the beauty of Jim Kleiner. That's the beauty of you know Jimmy Tom Sula. That's the beauty of those guys who they didn't look at you as an English kid. They looked at you as a football player, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is, a lot of coaches don't look at that look at you that way, right? And think about mm -hmm. this too. And this is just this is fact. I'm just telling you facts, right? I'm, like I've been through this shit enough. I don't gotta. I don't gotta. I ain't kissing anybody's ass. I'm telling the truth, right? So when you, when you go in to a situation like NFL Europe was, where there were some guys up in that joint that were second, third round draft choices, right? Had money in them. Mm -hmm. the, the clubs had money in them, and you got a bunch of young coaches in a lot of cases that are trying to cut their teeth and they want to, they're dreaming a dream too. They want to coach in the NFL because they know that's where the bag is, right? So they're going to be a hard ass. Who are they going to be a hard ass on? The second round draft choice or the English kid? Yeah, yeah. Because the English, the English kid can't bite back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's not that he can't bite back, but he won't bite back. And, you know, so, so, so I watched it. I watched it every training camp. Mm -hmm. I watched it every training camp where I would watch coaches just rip a national player. And then uh, uh, NFL allocated player make the same mistake. Oh, oh no. No. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, bro, we got to do this again. I got to oh, run, yeah. but we got to do Jeff, this, this again. Man. Absolutely because beautiful, we bro. I did not expect this to go this way. Nor did I. Hey, much bro, I do appreciate hey, it. Don't tell me. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Don't don't under hey, don't underestimate me. <laughs> and I did, I did. So hey, my bad. But Jeff, hey. when did you when did you hear in the UK? Let me let me say this. I'm coming over. I'm coming over. I'll be over at Thanksgiving for the Thanksgiving games. I'll be up in Manchester. We're doing a game up in Manchester. Then we're coming back for the to the London. I'll be through Christmas. Oh, let's, let's get together. Up. And I'm dead serious about oh, this. No, definitely. Right? And I definitely. I want to say. thank no, thank you, Jeff. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Much appreciated. All right. No worries. We'll catch up. Love you, thank guys. you, bro. All right. Take care, Jeff. All Take right. care, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Later. Let's do the finale. I love one. I love you too. Exactly. That's the whole. That's the whole reason we're supposed to do the ending. Good man, man, starving. So once again, on that note, Hachi Hats. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. <clears throat> As I clear my throat, I have good meat, good God, let's, let's see.